Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Glad you all could make it tonight. Welcome to another episode of Conversations with Laura, Paranormal Pixie. Pardon the mess back there. I've been doing some rearranging. Um, thank you all for joining me tonight. I was really sorry that I wasn't able to last week, but, uh, you know, life happens and we just go with the flow. So I'm glad to be here tonight with each and every one of you and so grateful for all of you for, for coming and joining me tonight. Um, some things have been going on lately that have really kind of thrown us all for a loop that I'll touch base on, um, throughout the evening as we talk. And, uh, yeah, you know, just, uh, try to go with the flow. I wanted to maybe share some of my childhood experiences with you uh, and uh, talk a little bit about what it's like growing up feeling like the oddball, you know. I uh, hope that all of you are doing well. Our weather up here in the mountains has been crazy. It's snowing and 30 degrees in one minute and sunny and 60 degrees the next so um yeah actually as, as we have clouds passing by because i've got the curtains open you'll see the light sort of change in the room here so um that's what's going on with the lights if you ask so as many of you know those of you that have been here before um i i like to kind of you know, set the mood for everything, and, uh, um, well, we just had the equinox. It's, on the books anyway, it's spring. Now, the weather outside may have a whole nother idea, but we're in spring. We have passed that turning point, that equinox, equal night, equal day into the time when the days are longer, um, the weather starts getting warmer, the flowers uh, for some of us are already blooming, uh, breaking out of the ground here. Uh, we were looking this afternoon as we walked up the uh, sidewalk and I've got tulip uh, leaves coming up out of the ground and iris is starting to show themselves so i'm looking forward to all the splendor that that comes with that so on that note i'm going to light my sage and then we'll light our candle and so i've got my little smudge pot here most of you know about it nice little fire safe container and Tonight, I thought I'd do a little sage, um, a little cleansing, a little clearing, you know, uh, going with that theme of, of spring, spring cleaning, of um, being able to open up the windows and let in, you know, fresh, fresh air and energy, um, that renewal of life. So I'm going to just light my single leaf here. This is California white sage. And get it going. And there we go. There we go. And share a little bit of that smoke with you and every one of you. A little bit for me. Cleanse and clear myself. I already did a little bit on my space. Do a little bit here on my tools. And then I'm going to put it out just because I don't want too much of it. And this one is burning really strongly. There we go. All right, and something else that um, most of you know that I like to do 
because I like to light a candle and set an intention. And so, again, I think with this being, you know, we're now into spring and equinox and all, I'd like to set the intention of renewal and renewal in all of the ways um, it it means to you, it resonates to you, whether that's um, looking at new growth, new life, new opportunity, um, being re-energized, being inspired, being alive again. We tend to go within and almost hibernate and feel dormant during the winter uh, in the colder months. So with that, I actually have a new candle. You know, I like candles. I uh, One of my classmates, I didn't realize, is actually a chandler, a candle maker. And so I bought this lovely lilac scented candle from her, along with a couple of lavender candles. And so I wanted to, as I'm doing this, give her a quick shout out. She has her own little company, a little Etsy store. And the name of the company is Southern Sass candles and i'm going to hold up her little label here so you can all see and her scents are all really just wonderful she actually included some extra goodies in my box along with um the candles that she sent she sent me a uh, this one is a uh, lavender um, wax melt. Uh, these are lilac and lavender wax melts. Um, and she just in she included so many wonderful little gifts inside. Here's one of the little wax melts. She puts little sparkles. These are all hand poured by her. They just smell absolutely delightful, and it's not a uh, synthetic smell. It's natural. Um, she even includes in the uh, candles themselves, she, she puts confetti in the top of it, and confetti not just in sparkles, but um, like, you know, this is a... a piece of tumble um, rough amethyst and you know all kinds of wonderful little stones as you can see there so I'm going to actually set these aside because that's one thing if you, if you are going to buy from her you, um, she even says in the little card you know remove all the little um, loose bits before you use your candle. So I'm gonna get as much of that out as I can. There's the little rose buds and little bits of fresh lavender. This one actually is a double wick, but I think I'm only, right now I'm gonna only light one wick just for tonight. So with the intention of renewal for each and every one of us, and I should have probably primed this, but that's okay. For renewal in all its forms, in the equinox, in all its splendor, spring, may it resonate and bring all those wonderful things into your life. Thank you to my guides and my guardians, and to your guides and your guardians. I'll set our little candle off to the side there. So, 
know, I love supporting small business, especially, you know, ones that I know that are, that are handmade, they're really thought out, well put together. Um, you know, because one, we've gotten so far away from that with, with corporate, with all of their, um, you know, big box stores and all of that. And well, yeah, I have, I go shop there as well, um, order online, so on and so forth. In some ways, because of the way our society is now structured, it's become a necessity. But being able to get back to the one-on-one of something that is handmade, hand-produced, um, especially when you can buy it directly from the artist. I, I just think that is so special. So I'm going to set these aside. So a couple of weeks ago, and I meant to grab it it's sitting over there. I, uh, had mentioned that I have a little golden healer quartz angel that I'd like to gift back to one of the gemstones. One of all of you sweet and kind people out there that support the channel, that support me, Gemma, and Ghost Dragon. And just as a thank you, as a gift, as a way to give back. And I asked for some folks to comment and I noticed that we actually really didn't get very many comments. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna task you after this video, this evening, wait a little bit if you need to, but come back and if you want to rewatch the whole video, that's wonderful. You don't have to, but please leave a comment, um, whether it's just a thank you or it's uh, you have a question or you have a suggestion. Leave me a comment. Once I get enough comments to, to reach 10 people, tells you not many comments. Once I get 10 people, then I will meditate and ask for direction and choose someone to send this angel to. Because there's somebody out there that needs this angel, that they need that confidence, that feeling of knowing that they're supported by higher power. And so I want to make sure then it goes to a new home where it's needed. I did pull cards this week again for stones uh, to help us through our weekly journey. Who do we have coming down? Ah, ladybug. And so the cards that I pulled this week for our stones are petrified wood. Carnelian and Libyan Tectite. Libyan Gold Tectite. And so I'm going to start with Petrified Wood. It was the first one I pulled. And I'm going to show you the card real quick. And then I'll read it to you. So this is the card. So if you want to screenshot that. So you can refer to it later. You can do that. Um, again. These are from the Gemstone Affirmation Deck from Sage Goddess, if that's something you want to pick up for yourself. But I have a little piece of petrified wood that I actually picked up from them right here. Really sweet little piece. Not very big. It was, I want to say, only around 5 or $6. Um, so it's nice, it's pocket-sized, I can carry it with me. 
you know, hold it while I meditate, what have you. But petrified wood holds the power of the earth, bringing that life force into connection with your own. It resonates with the earth star chakra, connecting you to ancestral and ancient wisdom. Petrified wood is a stone of grounding, protection, patience, spiritual transformation, and past life recall. It is also useful for accessing the Akashic Records. Its affirmation is, my roots run deep, and I am connected to all. I embrace transformation. I harness ancient wisdom. You know, and with petrified wood, it really is a very grounding stone. You know, it is literally made once upon a time. This was where a piece of, this is, I believe, palm wood sat. And because in the cavity where it sat, there were, there was no oxygen to allow for decay. As minerals began to deposit in those places where it had broken down, you get the exact details of what that tree once looked like. And you can even see the, the bark details on this. So... Past Life Recall and Akashic Records, absolutely. And so if that is something that you're wanting to do, then Petrified Wood is a good stone to work with during your meditations. Or say if you're having a past life reading done, um, then you know hold a piece of Petrified Wood while either you're giving or receiving that reading to help with the access. So, Guardian Jackpot. Okay. So, um, that's, that's a very tragic thing, Guardian Jackpot, but, you know, I, I appreciate you wanting to spread the word about that, and so let's keep this, this woman in our thoughts as we go forward in the coming days and weeks, that... Wisdom will be granted and support will be given where needed to help her. So let's see. The next I'm going to do is carnelian. Now, right now, my carnelian that I wanted to get out is buried, but I just so happen to have and as you know, um, if you know, you know, um, I love sardonyx. And sardonyx is exactly that. It is carnelian and onyx combined. Okay, Aunt Edna. So she's saying, why have dreams of future events when you can do nothing about them? The info is fragmented and lacking. So that's going to really, it's going to depend on you. It's going to depend on the event. In some cases, it may simply be your higher self, your guides, your guardians saying, pay attention to signs. Pay attention to the information and not necessarily there's something that you can fix. And 
you're an empath, honey, just like me, Gemma, so many of us. And our first instinct is when we see something in a vision or a dream of an event, especially if it's one where something's going to be tragic, um, we're a fixer. We want to try to do something about it. And sometimes it's more about the knowing than it is about the doing and understanding that there may come a time down the road where you can look back and say, and I, and always write those down and you can look back and say, I knew that because what they're teaching you in doing that is self-confidence that yeah you really can do that you really can tap in and receive that information and know that information good example so like last night spaced out radio um they had deb's shakti on there she's she's so sweet really enjoyed the conversation and you know john yost who recently passed away uh, was a, a fairly prominent member of the paranormal community um, and UFO experience, your support, and so on. I really didn't know much about him. I heard him talk a little bit here and there on a couple of previous podcasts, but it turned out the day that he passed, that I woke up that morning and I woke up even though I was fog-brained like I usually am, but with the words ringing in my head, John Yost has passed away. And at that time, I'm like, I, I didn't even remember who John Yost was. But I wrote it down in my notebook. I keep a little notepad next to my bedside table and jot down that information. Oh, you're welcome, sweetheart. And so when a couple of days later, I received the news that, yes, indeed, John Yost has passed away. I'm like, oh, okay. So. Well, there was nothing I could do about that event. It was a way for me to know that, okay, I'm not nuts. <laughs> okay, maybe I am a little nuts, but that's the side point. But that what information I'm receiving and saying, okay, this isn't coming from me. This is coming from source, if you will, from higher self, guides, however you want to look at it. My, my psychic noise. But that it's valid, that it's accurate, that I am not just making this up, pulling a rabbit out of my hat. So... Keep that in mind when you get that kind of knowing or feeling, um, hearing, that, yeah, it may not be for you to actually do something about it, but to help you know that you know and that it's valid and that you're not crazy. I hope that helps. So back to our carnelian. Sardonyx is onyx and carnelian. Okay. Unless, of course, it is black sardonyx, which I actually find I have a piece here. Okay. So you've got black onyx and white onyx mixed together 
So with carnelian, though, carnelian, I'm going to hold the card up for you, and then I'll read it to you. I, I know I've read it to you before, but carnelian activates the sacral chakra energy center of creativity, pleasure, sensuality, and passion. And that's in all forms. Known as the gemstone version of caffeine, um, carnelian enhances stamina, optimism, and empowerment. It kicks your ideas, visions, and dreams into high gear. Carnelian reminds you that you are divinely alive, boosting your energy when you're feeling down. It's affirmation, I am divinely alive, and I am empowered to create. On Edna, I think this one's for you, honey. I know a little that uh, there's a few of us that can use it. But, you know, and I think that's part of why I like Sard so much is it is that energizer and having grown up you know i am that creative person i love to to create art do all kinds of wonderful things so all right that is our carnelian and let's see As I have to turn and burn to Utah, I don't have time to deal with myself. Uh, I am the ordained and appointed icon. <laughs> Why, thank you. And thank you so much, sweetheart, for that awesome donation. You have no idea that is going to help Gemma so very much. You know, since she lost her her writing um, deal, that is really going to help her so very much. So thank you, darling, and fly and be protected. Um, enjoy the beautiful weather in Arizona. I'm a little jealous. And absolutely, you know, we are all in this community drawn together because we have a mission and whether that mission is you know like what i've been drawn to 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 sort of bring us all together to support the community to build confidence um encouragement and so on you know it it all matters and thank you again so much that is so sweet of you to donate Safe travels out there, honey. All right, so I'm going to go on to our last one, and that is Libyan Tectite or Libyan Gold is another word for it. So, Libyan Gold Tectite, I've got a bracelet here. I guess I need to have it sized. I'm going to hold it up close. It also has a little citrine here on top. This one's a paler piece. Sometimes you'll get it where it's a, a, a deep, I call it Mountain Dew yellow. Um, you know, so it's a real deep yellow or it's this real pale, soft yellow. Um, you know, it comes from the Libyan desert, from an ancient uh, meteoric impact. And while this isn't from the meteor itself, say like Moldavite, where Moldavite actually has part of the meteor um, embedded within the tectite. This is from the sand that was instantaneously turned to glass, basically, when that impact occurred hundreds of thousands of years ago. So Libyan tectite, is an otherworldly gem of ascension. It corresponds to the soul star and solar plexus chakras, helping you activate interdimensional and cosmic awareness. Even King Tut believed this crystal was so powerful that he had a scarab carved from it on his burial adornment. 
And if you actually um, Google the King Tut um, burial adornment or burial scarab, you'll see there's this great big, you know, winged necklace of a scarab and the body of the scarab is this hand carved beautiful piece of Livian gold tectite in the center of that. And it's actually one that, you know, while it's technically it's desert glass. Um it, so it's not a stone. It's one that I've been drawn to for a very long time. And for me the draws to ancient Egypt during the time of the pharaohs, before the time of the pharaohs, has always been extremely strong. Oh, thank you again for the, another donation. And you were, says, I am a boss and so I appreciate you and I appreciate you putting that faith in me and empowerment in me so that I can go out and do this work. Um, and more and more of us light workers are, ah, thank you, sweetheart. So glad to have you as a member in the channel. More and more light workers, um, soul beings, star beings, star children are being woken up to this calling. And it, it I, I know my husband will shake his head because he doesn't, he tries. I love him, but he doesn't get this whole thing. But I'm hearing more and more and more people going, I don't know what's going on, just all of a sudden, you know, three years ago, last year, last month, that all of a sudden, you know, I I have these psychic abilities and it's just out of the blue and I don't know what to do with them. And so it's people like myself, like you, Boss Monster, um, that we've kind of figured out a little earlier what our calling is in helping bring these people up to speed to basically help with the next evolution of our planet our society in understanding that what has been called for such a long time the supernatural is simply natural that has not been understood until this time. So psychic abilities, um, dealing with interdimensional, extraterrestrial, Bigfoot, all of that is all naturally occurring while rare up until recently is now going to be more prolific, more seen, more understood. And there are those of us that basically we're the teachers. We are the ones to help remove the fear. And, you know, I get into conversations online and occasionally in public um, with folks that our society has really pushed through that fear of the quote supernatural and oh you know if you if you are speaking to ghosts or spirits um that you're talking to demons or that you are a necromancer and doing evil things and and because I like candles and I like sage and all of this that, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to summon the big D and do bad things. And, 
you know, that's just not true. 99% of the time, the people that are out there that are just like me, just like you that are listening, we are out there because we want things to be better. We want life to be better. We want the best for our loved ones. We want the best for our pets, for our family, for our children. So being able to have conversations like this with all of you and take some of that fear out of the conversation so that when you do experience these things like on Edna, you know, instead of, and I, I'm not saying you had fear, but instead of fearing, you know, why is this happening to me? You know, what happened? Why? Um, but it's like, oh, okay. I'll pay attention. Thank you for letting me know. You know, just like with, with John Yost. It's like, okay. Now, that said, I also, in listening to the conversation, going back to John Yost, understand last night, you know, that um, because of his personality and that he is a very connected being, even though he's no longer in what we consider physical form, that it's very possible that I may encounter him because he is a very strong psychic and working with exactly the same type of work that I'm trying to do, that people like um, Robin Haynes for instance, um, or, uh, you know, Gemma. There, there are so many of us out there. Um, Sarah Lemos, uh, Scotty Davis. You know, there are so many of us out there that are, we're trying to take away the fear and help move us forward in this new cycle. So, Enough of that rambling, but thank you. Thank you for the donations. Thank you for the support. It means the world. You have no idea. Because too many of us spent all of our lives with, you know, um, I, I love how this, th there's one gal, she, she actually put out a book that I've been meaning to get, and it's called Healing the Witch Wound. But it's about how we're all in this mixed up journey and trying to learn to heal from how we were wounded by other people who didn't understand us. And that's been a huge part of my journey. You know, the, you may see me as, as the woman who sits before you, purple hair, confident, Speaking her truth, trying to. There's a scared little girl that still sits here. That is still healing from the bullies that called me a freak. Threw rocks at me. Beat me up. Um, the friends that left me. So on. So... Comments in chat on StreamYard. Okay, so the let me see if I can see that, sweetheart. All right. Uh, okay. You may see me messing around with the screen. As I type to see if this works. Okay, so I'm presuming that you all can still see me. Um, so let me look and see if I see it over here. Okay.
just go ahead and look on your screen. All right. Yeah, I'm looking right now. Okay, so slow motion. Edna. Okay. I'm not sure I understand Bat Mom's comment. Um, She's talking about what's on the screen right now. Try that again. Sorry about that. It's just this guy, this person is going it down, and I just want to make sure you see him. But I'm trying. I'm, you know, it's kind of odd. So I'm just trying oh, to be polite. Yeah. Same you know, if you need to, if you've got somebody that I don't recognize, I'm gonna close this. Um. That. Okay, Guardian. Yeah. So. Guardian. So we're gonna just ask you to kind of dial it back for a little bit um i appreciate you and you know i know i've i've seen you in a lot of other streams i appreciate your support all of that i'm gonna have you why don't you think about contacting me um after the stream privately uh you can find my email um in the show notes and you know we can we can talk more i put it so in chat it, but i it, i just it's, it's getting crazy. too much and I yeah just so if it's care. getting too much um but i you appreciate know, the donations first i don't know if you're so but yeah. yeah i just we just gotta well, be careful that mm -hmm. I, and that's it i appreciate the comments and i appreciate the support of the channel and thank you stephen for bringing that to my attention because unfortunately, with my setup, I don't see the um, YouTube chat. I don't have that ability right now. Um, so try to stay focused on on what I'm saying to you. And it's sounding like that maybe there's there's more conversation that needs to be had away from this stream so let's just kind of dial it back otherwise you know it can disrupt everybody else and what i'm trying to share what i'm trying to teach so you know thank you again for that with that said i'm gonna do a little bit of energy clearing here because i'm feeling like we need to so I am going to, I've got my singing bowl, one of my singing bowls. This is the one that I brought back from Myrtle Beach. And so just to help kind of clear the energy and I'll, I'll ring it softly. Hopefully the sound won't overwhelm. Be careful if you are listening via earbuds, but I just want to kind of clear that energy. I'm going to have everybody who's watching, including myself, take a moment to kind of sit back, sit up straight. If you can, put your feet flat on the floor. So you would call this active pose. So instead of, you know, laying down on the ground or in bed, now, if you are um, on bed rest or in a place where you can't 
that's understandable. But open up your chakras from your sits bone all the way up. And you just imagine like a string pulling you straight up. And I want you to take some deep breaths with me. We're going to go in and out. We're going to count four for each one. In. Out. In. Out. Allow that breath to kind of help Seat your energy back into your body and away from the, the chaos. Okay. So then looking at our time. Oh, I did have a request. I think it was Christine and there were a couple other folks. You know that um, as part of the, one of the things that I like to do artistically, I've been doing some wire wrapping. And so I wanted to show you a couple of my wire wrapped pieces that I've done lately. And these are all either sterling silver wrapped or I've got one there that's sterling silver with copper. So this is a piece of titanium aura kyanite that I've sterling wrapped so that almost reminds me a little bit of a broom and not in a witchy way broom, but, you know, kyanite being a a grounding and clearing um, type energy, you know, could be used, say, when I'm doing uh, healing work to sweep through a person's auric field to help ground and clear. So there's that one. And then I've got a couple of pieces of fire quartz and I'm experimenting with different ways to wrap and different style cages so then I've got this one this is fire quartz so fire quartz is quartz that has a lot of iron in it giving it its red color and what I'm doing with the spheres is I'm actually wrapping them so that they can spin in the cage. Because so many of us um, intuitives, sensitives, um, tend to also be a bit ADHD. And we like to fidget. We need to be able to do things with our hands. So, you know, we're constantly, we're doing puzzles or, or you know, we're drawing or scribbling, so on. We like those fidget spinner toys, which I'll, I'll show you one I just got that is love. But I wanted these to not only be able to be worn as a pendant, but to be like a little fidget spinner. And so, again, I'll hold that up. You can see this one has three bands around the base in silver and then I did one a little differently in a spiral and this one's a darker fire quartz and again it does spin so it can be turned I actually have I don't have it out here um a couple of pieces of both um, sardonyx, it, 
black sardonyx and red sardonyx where their quartz on one side and then like carnelian or onyx on the other side so it almost reminded me of like day and night or sun and moon um vibes to them so i'm going to be playing around with making those into pendants as well and uh eventually i'd like to my husband does arts and crafts fairs so i'm hoping to maybe put some of them up for sale this one is a little sweet little milk quart sphere so i forget who it was i think it was maybe um Susie b was talking about wanting a little um quartz sphere that she could wear and so it inspired me to make this little spiral one so if you're out there Susie b talk to me we can i figured it out i think i can make you one i've got then I, oh actually i do have one of the sard here so i've been making uh wire cages out of sterling silver wire which Stephen, i will be i now that i've got it figured out um how to make it work making that one for you out of the red tiger's eye sphere that i got for you but you can see with this one how it's got this one side that's actually quartz on this side and then it the white solid white band is the um white part of the onyx and then the carnelian and so to me it just this one had sun and moon vibes to it and again i wanted it to be able to spin you know so you could have sun on one side moon on the other and then i've got a couple including the one that i'm wearing um that are lapidolite and you know lapidolite is a it has lithium in it it's very supportive to the sympathetic nervous system it's a very calming stone and so yeah what better than a fidget toy made out of very calming stone so i've got a couple of different style patterns that i've practiced making independence so now the neat thing about these two is if if you're the type of person that likes to do um intuitive work with a pendulum you could be also using this with um as a, a pendulum now i know some folks pendulums it's not their thing and i totally understand and i highly respect that the way i was raised the way i was taught working with pendulums it's not that you're connecting to some unknown force out there be it positive or negative it is helping you tune in to your higher self for those answers those yes no you know should i do this should i not do that um and so on you know i use pendulum when i'm doing uh intuitive healing work and okay is this person's chakra in balance in this spot and allowing it my energy my higher knowing to work to give me that answer so then i've been doing like on the uh kyanite um also just some free form wrapping and i know some of you have seen the uh smoky quartz that i did for gemma um and i wrapped it with copper wire i did a uh, citrine uh, smoky citrine for myself in copper wire as well so you know again also if there's gemstones out there people gemstone that maybe you're looking for something 
um, you're called to say, I'd like to find a amethyst heart and have it wire wrapped so that um, I can wear it as a pendant or give it as a gift um, to a loved one or what have you. You know, you, that's something else that you can also contact me about. Um, I even did figure out by using heavier gauged wire how I could wrap a heart shape and have it be stable. Um, this one is actually a um, amethyst that has golden rutile um, inside the amethyst. So you can always send me an email or hit me up on Facebook um, or Instagram for that, as well as any intuitive work that you'd like, psychic readings, um, helping you with guidance, um, and answering spiritual questions or non-spiritual questions, the supernatural, so on. So with that said, keep in mind tomorrow night, um, we've got our wonderful sweetheart, Gemma Jade, doing her one card intuitive oracle readings from 7 15 p.m eastern time until 11 11 15. Um, make sure you get there early so that, and know that as soon as you come in and you make a comment in the chat that your name will get put on a list if your name is called and you prefer not to have a card then that's okay just let um, Stephen and Ghost Dragon know by typing so in the chat. Stephen will most likely be on uh, Saturday night, so keep an eye out for our Ghost Dragon and the replays. And then watch the channel, like, subscribe for the upcoming stories that Gemma will have out on Monday, which, you know, double check, there may be a brand new story out. Um, on the channel from Gemma. And with that said, my throat chakra says it's time to stop speaking. I'm going to send love, light, peace, and renewal to each and every one of you. And with that, good night, everybody. Love and blessings.